In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a SQL Server database in Microsoft Azure and how to connect to the database in SQL Server Management Studio. Now, first thing first, navigate to your Microsoft Address console. And throughout the tutorial, I'll cover four things. So first, we're going to set up the SQL Server database. Then I'm going to show you how to add the IP address to the firewall list. Then we're going to connect to the SQL Server database in Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. And last, I'm going to show you how to completely delete the SQL Server instance. Now going back to the address console. So first, we need to navigate to Azure SQL. Now there are several ways you can create a SQL Server database on Azure. But using Azure SQL, I think is the easiest way to create a database. Now here, click on Create. On the SQL databases, set the resource type to single database. Then click on Create. On the Basics tab, choose the subscription that you want to use. Then choose a resource group. And if you don't have a resource group, simply uh, click on Create New to create a resource group. But here I'm going to choose my extend resource group. They want to give the database a name. And I'll name the database my JJ database. And on the server, I want to create a new server. And I'll name the server JJ SQL Server 456. So I just want to point out that the server name needs to be globally unique. Then choose the server location. For the authentication method, I'm going to choose Use SQL Authentication. Now if I'm using Azure Active Directory, then you can uh, set the option to use Microsoft Intra-only Authentication. But 90% of the time, you're going to use SQL Server Authentication. So using this method, you will simply provide the user ID or login ID and the password. Now here, I'll give the account a password. It can also provide a new login ID. Then click on OK to go to the next page. Now for the SQL Elastic Pool, I'm going to set that to no. So what this option does is that it allows you to share the resource with other users. And for the environment, I'm going to set that to development. And for the backup storage redundancy, choose the appropriate redundancy that fit into your use case. Then we want to go to the next step, networking. For the connectivity method, we want to choose public endpoint. And for the firewall rules, I'm going to enable at current client IP address. And I'll keep the allow Azure services and resources to access this server to know. And for the connection policy, I'm going to set that to default. Same thing with the encryption connections uh, version. Then let's go to the next page, security. Now for the security setting, I'm going to leave everything as default. Then I want to go to additional settings. Under data source, I'm going to add the sample database. And that's basically the AdventureWorks database. You can also choose backup to use a backup database or choose none if you don't want to include any database when you create the database. But for demonstration purpose, I'm actually going to include the sample database. Then we can click on review and create. Now review the page and make sure that all the information is correct. And I want to check one more thing. Oh, okay. So I forgot to cover compute and storage. Now, by default, it's going to use general purpose serverless compute option. So with this compute configuration, you only uh, pay for the users that you use. All right, so let's go ahead and click on review and create and make sure that all the information is correct. Then we can click on create to create the server instance.
And once the deployment is complete, so that basically means that you have created a server instance as well as the sample database that you have included during the setup process. Now here, click on go to resource. And that takes you to the database page. The server name here is going to be the uh, server address that you will need to connect to the instance. Now, if I'm working in a public place like a coffee shop or airport, and you may want to add the IP address to the uh, firewall list. So if you want to go to, actually not here, or oh, actually let's go to the uh, service page. Now under the server instance page, want to go on the security, then go to networking. And because I'm using VPN, my IP address is always going to get updated uh, every 15 minutes. And to add an IP address, under firewall rules, you want to click on add your client IP v4 address to the list. You can also choose add a firewall rule to uh, set an IP range. Now save and let's continue. Now let's connect to the database in SQL Server Management Studio. Now go ahead and launch your SQL Server Management Studio. From the login page, I want to go back to the database page and copy the server name. And paste the server name in the server name field. And for the authentication method, I want to choose single server authentication. Then type in the login info. Then click on connect. And that should connect to the database. Now, if I expand my database, and here's my, my JJ database, and if I expand the tables, and I should see the adventure sample tables. Now, to delete a SQL Server instance, that including the databases in the server instance. So first, we want to make sure that we disconnect all the applications that connect to the server instance. They want to go back to address console and go back to the server instance page. Then go back to the overview page. Now here we can click on delete. And just follow the instruction to delete the server instance. And that should be it. So this is going to be everything we're going to cover in this lesson. And hopefully you guys find this video useful. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.